Hi guys, how are you today? We are here this week in February for my creative year to talk about our topic of the month, which is color. And this week, our specific color is yellow. So as I spoke earlier in the month, um, with the other two weeks that we did already with color, y'all know by now I mixed this custom watercolor palette. For those that don't know, I'm gonna insert some clips right here of mixing it. I took all of my tubes of watercolor paint and I mixed all my reds together, all my yellows together, uh, oranges together, all my yellows, my greens, my blues, and my purples, and this is what I came up with. Now, I got the idea from Sifia Nygaard's makeup videos where she mix, mixes some of her makeup all together. Um, then somebody else did all of their, I think, acrylic paint, and any of those links I can think of, I'll link in the description below for you all here on YouTube. I thought it was really interesting, and I thought also, though, to take it one, one step further and thought, Hmm, what would happen if I, instead of mixing all of my colors together, if I separated them out, which I did. So I didn't separate out warm or cool reds. I mixed all the reds together. If it was red, it got mixed in there. Um, the same with the yellows and the blues and the other colors in the palette. Now with the yellow, I didn't differentiate between uh, really golden browny yellows and bright lemony yellows. I mixed them all together. I was expecting a muddier, uh, more gray toned palette than what I got. All of these colors generally are uh, pretty bright considering all the different colors that are in here. I didn't differentiate between artist and student grade paint and it got all mixed together. And I really kind of like the palette that came out from that. So this week we are going to experiment with the yellow one and we are gonna see what we come up with. So again, like the other weeks, I have two watercolor ATC cards. These are scraps. These feel like thick scraps. So I'm wondering if these are 300 pound watercolor paper. They might be. Um, I did get some of those scraps uh, about a million years ago from Claudia Rossi and um, that's what these may be. So I already sprayed a little water on my yellow paint and we are going to start with a flat brush like we did before and we are going to get our cards wet and then we're going to take just a little bit of the yellow paint which is pretty bright, right? <laughs> it's pretty bright. For a yellow that's got all these other crazy colors in it of yellow. It's so much brighter than I thought it would be. I'm going to just put a little bit of texture in the paint by lifting some of it with a crinkly rag. You could of course put, um, you could spread the paint out with the water and sprinkle salt on it and that's going to give you an interesting texture. Let it dry then brush the salt off and add another layer. There's a lot of different ways to do this piece of my hair in there. <laughs> so this week, instead of adding a bunch of layers with drying in between, I think I'm going to just work with show you what you can do with just one layer without all the drying, if that's okay with you. So I want it to be sort of lighter in the middle and darker around the edges, so that's what I'm shooting for. So I'm going to, in between putting color on, lift some of the paint. Okay. I like that, so now I'm gonna dry it and I'll be right back. Okay, now we're gonna take some Distress ink in the color Mustard Seed. And this is stamp set from my design line number six. And you can see this sort of citrusy shapes here um, in this particular set. We are gonna take this one and not do that with it. <laughs> Holy cow, let's wipe that off. All right, so we are gonna stamp this on our little ATC cards. So 
sort of randomly. Yeah. And then we ha I have a multi pen here that has yellow, a yellow, a dark, like golden yellow color in it. So I am going to write on the card. Of course, now it's decided not to write. You know, I need to just get rid of that pen. I have another pen that has a color in it that's almost exactly the same. So we're going to use that one. Have a zest for life. I'm going to sign the back. I'm going to take oops, one of the arrows from the same set. It has these two arrow shapes on it. Do I want to just do? I think I want to just do one in the same um, mustard seed color. So there's that, two cute little ATC cards. Let's, let me show you one more thing that you can do. So of course I have another scrap piece of paper. This is another one of those large bookmarks. This one happens to have like some splotches of paint on it, but we're gonna use it the way it is. I am going to take a little bit of water. I don't think it'll do anything because I think this paint has been on here like a long time. Yeah, okay. So that's, don't do that. <laughs> so I'm going to take my round um, watercolor brush. First, I'm going to go grab, let me grab a yellow pencil. Um, I don't want a yellow pencil that's going to move much. So let's grab a regular yellow pencil. This one is Deep Cadmium. It's just a plain Derwent watercolor pencil. And let's draw some lemony shapes on our paper. These would make cute gifts, like if you had a holiday or something coming up, or maybe you were having a party and you needed to do little favors, little like bookmarks are always, I think, always a good gift, but I'm an avid reader, and when I don't need them for marking my place in a book, I stick them in my journal, so could just be me. <laughs> All right, so I have just two. Can you see that? Okay. So we are going to take some of our yellow paint, and I have my palette here. Grab some water. If you need to, um, you know, Google or go to Pinterest for pictures of lemons for inspiration, if you need to, you know, remind yourself what they look like. It's a pretty easy shape though.
you want to be careful about putting too much water here because there is a white line under the skin, between the skin and the fruit. So you don't want to put too much water there or the paint is going to cover up your white line. We're trying to leave the paper white where we want those white parts to be. If you don't do that and you make a mistake, never fear. Don't be afraid to get your white gel pens or white acrylic paint involved and fix it that way. No shame in that. Okay. So once I have the shape drawn, it's really just a matter of me sort of filling it in. But I'm filling it in in a way that I'm on purpose trying not to um, color it in completely so it just looks like a coloring book page. Okay, and then just like we did the other one, I put the line of the skin on and then I'm putting some water. So it blends just a little bit towards the inside. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the fruit part. some more of the sort of pure thicker pigment with watercolor if you the more water you add the lighter it's going to be the less you add the darker generally that's how that works so now we can go back and add maybe a little bit of the dark in a couple places A little bit of paint right here where I don't want it so I'm going to put some water there and go in real quick and lift it up. I don't mind this little bit right here where the water um, got it and it bled a little bit. I'm going to on purpose do it over here or, or, or try to anyway. I like that. I do want to cut off those two crazy ends because they bother me with the other colors on there. At least the blue one did. The red one, not as much, but I'm going to cut a little bit of it off too. I really like that. I'm going to take my pencil again. really like that. Um, let's take our pen again. I like that. That's really cute. And let's get it signed. Let's dry it first and let me sign it and I'll be right back. Okay, so there you have it. Um, stick around for just a minute and I am going to show you here really quick um, how I created the watercolor box that my paints are in. So right here we're gonna cut away and as I've said before, 
I created the colors themselves by taking all of my purple paints, watercolor tubes, and mixing them together. All of my blues, all of my greens, all of my yellows, oranges, and reds. I didn't differentiate between cool and warm um, colors in that category. I mixed all of them together. The only exception was I did not mix any metallics into um, the color. So if I had metallic purple paint, I didn't stick that in there. I didn't want these to be metallic. So then um, I used watercolor full pans and then I thought, okay, what am I going to put them in? So here you'll see a clip of me um, with a pencil box that I had saved from pencils that I bought. And I took the box and I sprayed it with white um, enamel spray paint. After I took a hammer to the bottom of the box, which um, had an indentation in it, so it made it so that the watercolor pans just kind of didn't fit. So I took a hammer um, and a um, punch that I had, and I turned it around actually to the back side, and I used it to hammer out and flatten out the bottom of the box so that my pans would fit better. Then I painted it with the white enamel paint, and then I used some glue to decoupage one of my jelly prints um, to the lid and I created this cute watercolor pocket box um, and before I was done I created a sample card here that you're going to see right now as we come back to the table um, a sample card of the color so I could remember what they were and I just left it out to dry um, for I think like a week before they dried all the way. Um, I did attach the pans to the box with a little bit of blue tack putty, which is an adhesive putty, and they are stuck in there really well. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this. I can't wait to play with it more um, coming in the weeks coming up. Um, I really love the way the, the way the colors turned out to my surprise. I expected them to be all muddy, as I've said, so I they're nice and bright. I love them. I do have three little things here in yellow. Like with the previous weeks, I'm going to be keeping one and sending the other two off. If So if you want to get a random act of kindness like that, which is what it's called, we have a mailing list for that in the files over in the Facebook group. So make sure your name is on it if you're in the Facebook group. If you're not in the Facebook group and you would like to be, um, the link is in the description below. Um, that is where we support these videos and the students. We encourage daily art activities and have activities over in Facebook just for that. Um, and it's a caring, supportive, creative community that I think you'll all enjoy. So if you would like, go join and we'll accept you. Don't forget to answer the questions. If you don't answer the questions, you might not get in. Um, if you want to buy any of my rubber stamps um, or support my channel, my Etsy shop link is also in the description below. Along with any of the other videos I've mentioned, like Sophia Nygaard's um, makeup mixing videos that I originally saw that prompted this whole idea. Um, and um, don't forget the most important thing, besides like, share, and subscribe, if you will, um, go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Make some art, have some fun, and just enjoy yourself. All right, that's it for right now, everybody. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.